Hello there. Right, we're going to follow on from the video blog of the other day about uh, controlling, using your head in martial arts, in the various aspects of that. And weird one for you, literally just before I put that video out, it was already done and edited, before I put that video out, I was having a chat with old mate of mine, Tony Cicchini, he of catch wrestling fame. And I just let him know that we're video is just about to go out about using the head and all the various principles that we have. And of course, Tony has those same principles and that same method of application in so much as once you understand the principles of a technique and how it works, you can apply those principles to other techniques and you'll find that the technique appears for you much more because you understand the principles because you've got your basics in place, your foundations in place, whatever you want to call it, principles, basics, foundations, all of those things molded together will help you apply things that much easier and see them that much quicker. Now, for years and years and years I've been going on and on and on about the striking, getting your feet in the right place, making sure your head's in the right place, your hands are in the right place, your hips, your shoulders, and the relationship between those joints and your main skeleton structure is correct, and everything else kind of just works for you. And I've said that so many times. And the same is true whether that's striking, standing grappling, takedowns, throws, grappling on the floor, or striking on the floor. Your basics, your foundations must be correct. Now, I've also said I make no excuse for the fact that what we do is a learned skill and you've got to train it. Some things, of course, are much easier to pick up than others and they don't require as much training and as much drilling to get right. Especially if you already have your basics in place. Now, basics to me is not, you know, some of the old karate way of just going up and down the hall, doing gay and bry, gapazuki, blah, 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 up and down, water turn, repeat, with no real depth of understanding of what that means and how it should be applied. To me, the basics of something like that is truly understanding where you are in relation to your opponent, where all your balance is, where your strength is, where your weakness is, where you're open, where you're closed, where your opponent is open to attack, where they're closed to attack. Making sure that when you're throwing something offensive that you're as defended as possible when you do it. Bring in mind that whatever position you're in, obviously there's some that you're not, in general, whatever position you're in, you're open to attack. You know, when your boxer throws his jab, he's open to be countered. When a jabbing arm's out here, all this is open, etc., etc. So, taking that into account, yes, of course, there's always something, there's always a hole that you can pick. You can always look at a technique that's being done and go, oh, I could get you just there, or I could poke you in the eye there, or something. Yeah. Okay, but it's all about the way it's being applied and making sure that when you're using an offensive movement that your defense is as good as it can possibly be. Now that doesn't mean that you're static, you're moving, everything's a whole host of things going on, but to me that's the basics. And exactly the same with Tony. So your basics have got to be right, your foundation's got to be right. And then everything else just kind of works. And a lot of the stuff that we show you, we assume that your basics are right, that your foundations are right. Now, some people are just that naturally gifted that even with pretty poor basics, they're so athletic, so strong, so agile, so quick, that they get away with it. They get away with blue murder. If you're an old fat slob like me, you can't. You've got to make sure that that foundation is in place. 
to give yourself the best possible chance of success. Okay, so jumping back now to the conversation with Tony, we're going on about head control. And um, Tony can show you ways in advance of what I've already mentioned for you for things like stopping a sprawl, just using head control. We're stopping a sprawl. Instead of doing a sprawl, just using head control. So when somebody's shooting in, he can stop that shoot with his head, using head control. Stop it with his head and an arm, or just one arm. It's all about making sure that the foundations are there. That's the key. It's not a fancy trick where he puts his arm there, or puts his head there, and it just works because he's put his head or his arm there. The same principle applies when I mentioned to you the other day about putting your head up here for control standing grappling. You'd use that same control for, you know, like I said, for strikes that we use it for boxing and moving people. You use the same thing if you get a hold of people, get behind them, get to the sides of them, drop down, take them out, whatever it may be. That same bit of control would be used. But you can't just plunk your head there and expect it to work for you. Because the other guy will move. You've got to get your basics in place first. Then when you stick your head there, you will be able to feel what's going on. And that's how Tony can do it when somebody's coming in to do the takedown. And instead of sprawling, he can use his head or his hand or both. There's a lot of other things going in place. He's not just plunking his head there or plunking his arm there. His footwork's there, his hips are there, body weight, all sorts of stuff are going on, which you still have to do when you plunk your head here, like I mentioned the other day. You don't just plunk your head there. You've still got to have your footwork right. You've still got to have your hips right. You've still got to have your body weight right, your balance. You've still got to have your hands right. You don't just stick your head there and hope it will all work out. So... When we say things like, stick your head up here, we're assuming that you already understand what we would call the basics, the foundation of having your footwork, balance, hips, shoulders, and all those relationships and the hands all correct. And you understand what you're doing with them when you've got a moving opponent trying to stop you. Now, like I keep saying, when you're learning something, start light and slow and you've got fairly gross big movements that way like I mentioned the other day you learn much much quicker if you try to go in too hard too fast with it you may or may not get it and if you're struggling with it you definitely won't learn it you need to slow it down work it all out get the feel for it and then everything will kind of fall into place so this control that we talk about in the head it's, it's critical. It's critical for your self-defense. It's critical for your sports fighting. It's critical for your martial arts training. And like I said the other day, <clears throat> it's not just control of a physical thing. It's control of your mind as well, which is you know, probably more important. Because if the mindset is correct, again, other things start to work for you. So... Thank you for the emails, the people who emailed in asking a bit more about head control and exactly what I meant. Uh, I hope that's given a, a little bit of a better explanation. If not, we can add some more for you. But in the future, I want to talk, talk about control using the hands, shoulders, body weight, hips, footwork, knees, etc., etc. So we'll get onto that at a later date. But for now, I hope you enjoyed it. Even if you didn't, leave some comments. And a big thank you for Tony for a little chat the other night. And, um, yeah, listen to what he's got to say as well. Very, very important stuff.